Be sure and tell them Lord Mars sent ya. <laughs> In the 90s, we were just teeny tights. We went to movies and our bikes. We wanted to be DJs, but we were just teeny gals. So we went off to college and we remained. If I should stay, I would only be in your way. So I'll go. You okay? Yeah. But I know I'll think of you every step of. The way Hey guys, welcome to the Large Marge Santa's podcast, your favorite podcast where two sweetie sisters talk about their favorite flicks from childhood. I'm Sweetie. And I'm Sweetie. And tonight we did a little 90s um, super... Music, it's not a musical, but it's, it's just like musical. a lot of songs in it. Yeah. So I don't know. It's a romance with songs. What? I it's don't a know. romance with songs. What do you call that? Um, I mean, I'll I'll say what I think this is after we reveal okay. what it is. It's the bodyguard. bodyguard. Um, for me, and then up looking up on the stats on this movie. This was in 1992. This movie was basically like driven by its soundtrack first of all so and is did you know this fact as of 2015 who knows if like after the fact the record got smashed but still as of 2000 well of 2015 it was the most successful movie track of all time wow most copies sold like 35 million I believe it i mean we had it so yeah i think it was one of those things where like Everybody had this everybody soundtrack had it. kind of thing. It was like the thriller of soundtracks, right? Like everybody had it. And we were talking about this when we started watching it because Sweetie was like, when did you think you first saw this? Because it's like rated R. It's like kind of inappropriate for kids. And I was like, well, I think I just like knew the soundtrack by heart. Mostly just the Whitney Houston songs. And then watched the movie like much later mm -hmm. when it was like appropriate to do so. When it was on TV. And yeah, I moved to TV. And the swears were cut out yeah. and stuff like I really that. have probably only seen it like two or three times. I know. I haven't seen it that much. Yeah, me neither. But I feel like I have because I know the song so well. But, okay, <laughs> I'm going to be real here. <laughs> this movie is not that good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's good parts to it. But I felt like the script was horrible. Yeah. Did you think I, it was really badly written? Not the plot necessarily, but just like the uh, lines. Um, sometimes. I don't know. It just felt, it was just very like too slow for mm -hmm. me. Like it was just, I was like, get on with the assassination. Right. And like the, the, the murder kills and like more guns. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> and I think what the thing that they really brushed aside here and what I only realized in this one because I remember once we watched I was like wait something's wrong with the sister and I like forget what it is. And then you find out she's like basically a total psychopath and it really should be a story about wow like her sister wanted to kill her and put out a hit on her. And like they don't even really talk no. about that. True they just gloss it right yeah. over on that. So weird. Um but some good like scenes and moments. Um, I think Wendy Houston does awesome in this. It was her first movie, um, and like basically was her life. I mean, I don't know if she ever got stalked, but like, you know, she was as big of a singer as this woman in the movie is. Mm -hmm. So I think that's like so interesting when someone is like playing actual something that they can probably relate to. Interesting. Also confusing for a child who's like, wait, this is not a movie about Wendy Houston. What do you mean? I my book in the other right. room. Oh, okay, well, go get it. I just, you know, I was I was a confused child, and I thought, oh, this is just a movie about Whitney Houston. But it was Whitney Houston playing a different character. Confusing. Right. But to ever think that Whitney Houston was going to be nominated for an Academy Award, though, now that might be a leap. 
Yeah. Because she did good in this, but like, I don't think she's like the best actress ever. No. And I really preferred her, like, when she, her, my best scenes for her in this were her one on ones with Kevin Costner. I felt that they did have like really good chemistry. And it was the scenes where she was like, pretend, like, being the the actress singer that felt the most fake to me almost which you think that would be like the reverse because hmm. that's what she like really knew hmm. and could like pull from her own life yeah, i suppose yeah it's your pro show but i liked her when she was like sassing kevin costner and like i said like their romantic chemistry for me was like really good um but yeah overall it did feel like super slow and long super and like long. there were some kind of tense moments yeah which i think they do like a good job of um, and then some end up being like nothing, and mm. then there's kind of like a, a red herring thrown in there, which is like, which, which doesn't even, yeah, you know. yeah, doesn't like kind of really matter. Um, and then weird, super weird ending, not happy. Weird. I'm so, kind of happy, yeah. but not. <clears throat> it's just yeah. Yeah. I just think they could have put some more thought behind it, but like whatever, that's all. Right. Um, um, yeah. So as you said, 1992. This was like our dad's like favorite soundtrack ever. Maybe not his favorite movie. I'm sure. I don't think he like saw it as much. Um, so like we said, like we got the soundtrack from like BMG Music Club as like dad <laughs> would get like ten CDs a, a month, and we that's one of them we got. And then I just like wore the shit out of that thing. I had, like a silver disc man. And I remember just, and like I said, like, so the soundtrack is, let's see, one, two, three, four, five or six, I think six Whitney Houston songs. And those are the fucking best. They're so good. The rest of the songs, it's like Aaron Neville and Kenny G, like skip, Soul skip. Society or something. <laughs> yeah. It's the rest of them are like total garbage. And like basically, like, and it's funny, like once you really know the soundtrack, as like we do, and you see how they use those songs in the movie. <laughs> yeah, it's so random. It's like, here's a song she's listening to on her disc yes. quietly. Right. And <laughs> That's but the but they do feature her main songs in there. But wait, where's I'm Every Woman? I didn't hear that in the in this movie. Maybe it's in the credits. It's on the soundtrack? Yes. Oh. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, maybe it's in the credits maybe? or something? Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Because you know how there's like, they put songs it. in the soundtrack that are only in the credits. Yeah. And they're like, if you left the movie early, you would have like never heard that song. <laughs> oh. But yeah. Fucking love the soundtrack. And then like pretty pretty decent okay b minus movie i'd say right sure. yeah i agree agreed but like it's pretty fun plot so i think you should talk about it okay time for the sweetie synopsis yeah Sweeties. and i will always love you so like the trick when you're singing a really <laughs> loud song is to not sing directly into the microphone <laughs> We'll have to put a little note in the, uh, what, what second was that? <laughs> Six and there's like a giant blue. I hope you, you all big turned the blue it down. I did see how loud it was. You probably broke your microphone. <laughs> um, anyways, Frank Farmer is a former Secret Service agent who is looking to relax a little, I guess. We're not, I'm not sure. He goes to his weird serial killer apartment. Get more money. And is like, yay. More money for what? Like, what does he need money for? He just has an apartment with True. nothing He's in it. It looks like a serial killer. Simple lifestyle. It's weird. So anyways, he gets contacted by this fellow who's like, I need you to do security for this famous pop star named Rachel Marin. Um, bullshit name bullshit name <laughs> so bullshit um <laughs> and he's like what i don't do that and he's like oh we'll give you two thousand dollars a week and he's like no nope, three thousand he's like what okay you better be good and then he goes there and he realizes that this pop star rachel has no interest in having a bodyguard nor does she think she really needs one so he's kind of like well, what's up with what's going on here so he like talks to the, the guy the manager and like the publicist and they're like oh um yeah, all these like crazy things happen, but we decided not to tell Rachel. What were the crazy things? So like one time, <laughs> <laughs> this is exactly how they sound. A uh, one time, um, this guy like sent some sketchy letters, like um, just taken out of magazines that said like blah blah blah, I'm gonna kill you, bitch, <laughs> blah blah blah. Uh, and we didn't tell her about that because like she doesn't need she doesn't need to worry about that. She's she's busy. Um, and then another time, someone uh actually broke in the house and kind of ejaculated on her bed and <laughs> in her like fake bedroom that the they like bed wall. created the bed for wall. the fake boudoir, <laughs> boudoir which they created for like a celebrity bedroom but, you know, photo it wasn't shoot. really her bed so we were like we don't need to tell her also it's just gonna stress her out yeah. more and frank was like what <laughs> 
pissed. He was pissed. He's like, I quit. This is dumb. So dumb. But then they're like, we'll tell her. We'll tell her. So then he like beefs up the security around the house. Like really, like it was a it was a crap shoot over there. There was like a rusty gate with a button that didn't yeah. work. Nobody anyone, knew anything. Anyone could come in. It was dumb. Yeah. So he fixed it all. So he's working his thing. He's slowly getting closer to Rachel. She's like slowly starting to warm up to him, I guess. Yeah, and she he like tries to make her take this whole like threat seriously. And again, she like doesn't want to like change her lifestyle and like. Like, she has a Sunday brunch. Every day she goes to with friends. And he's like, you can't go to the brunch anymore. And she's like, why can't I go to the brunch anymore? So they get all these, like, little can't spats. The brunch. But they're kind of, like, flirty spats. And then, like, Rachel's a flirty girl. She's lonely. She's lonely. Super she wants to go on lonely. dates. And one night she's like, well, since, like, I, I really need to get basically laid. Uh, like, and you're the only person I can hang out with. Like, let's go on a date. So then they, like, go on a date, which seems, like, completely unprofessional. Well, not unprofessional in the sense that he was, like, maybe just playing along with it and be like, okay, sure, like, let's spend some time together, get to know each other, whatever. But then she just starts, like, inching her way in. Because that was her whole motive. That was her whole her whole end goal, right? Mm -hmm. Was to fucking sleep with him. So then they sleep together, and, oh, no, he wakes up with some regrets bad regrets he's like i did i i can't do this i can't sleep with a woman i'm supposed to i can't protect my you love like can't this get, my love can't get in the way of my protection can't happen so he like kind of breaks it off with her and she's super pissed she like takes it out on him what you can protect me but you can't fuck me Oof, it's a good line Oof. um they go to like some party in miami she like almost has sex with this other secret service guy and then she's like no i don't want to do this and gets rid of him but like frank doesn't even see so she's like dang i made him jealous for no reason i don't know so anyways <clears throat> basically the thing that happens wait so why did they go to the cabin okay so there's all these other like little threats kind of keep happening so she gets another letter yeah. and then um the guy calls her hotel suite somehow gets like the phone oh, number yeah. and then that's a wake-up call to her like okay and she's a son so like a son is factored into this like he needs protection too so it's not just her even though it's after her but like obviously she wants nothing to happen to her because then her son would be motherless so she's like whatever frank like i'll do whatever you tell me to do like i just want like this whole problem to be like go away or to catch this guy or whatever so he's like, I know what we can do. Let's go to my remote family homestead in like Colorado and visit Ooh. my pops. <laughs> pops. Yeah, good plan. So they go there, just her, the chef, um, Hen Henry? Henry, her son Fletcher, her sister Nikki, and, and Rachel, obviously. And they go hang out there, and all's good. They're like playing, like they're like doing white people shit. They're like, this is great. And they're like playing chess, <laughs> like watching them play chess. Yeah, cool. I'm like, wow, great entertainment um, for the booties. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, one day they're like, uh, <laughs> Frank and his father, are like, what's that called? Like tracking, scope it, tracking things, outside. tracking, tracking animals. like animal prints in the snow. He's like, what's that? An elk? What's that? <laughs> a deer? What's that? Oh my god! Human! 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 Someone's in here! Someone's been here! He freaks out. Notices the tracks are like leading to like this little boat on the dock where Fletcher is in the boat and decides to take off on his own in this boat. And Frank flips out and chases after him, jumps, tackles him out of the boat. They fall in the water. He gets him out of the water. Everybody's like, "What are you doing? Like you can't you're swim very him. well. You could have killed him." He's and like, Frank's I'm almost sorry. like, "I don't know." And everyone always thinks Frank's like overreacting. They're always like, "You're overreacting. No one's really trying to kill us." I'm like, "What?" I mean, a, it's his job. B, yes, somebody's trying to kill you. Get How is that overreacting? Get a grip. So they're like, oh, God, way to go, Frank. And then all of a sudden, the boat explodes. So there was a fucking bomb on the boat the whole time. Yep. Fletcher could have been killed. Yep. OMG. OMG. Ugh. So then they also find out. So, like, that happens, and they're like, shit, shit is going downtown. Like, we got the fuck out of here. Unfortunately, someone has, like, cut all the cars, so, like, they can't go anywhere. They're stuck there. And they're like, okay, we're just going to, like, batten down the hatches for tonight. Like, I got my gun. We're good. So then Frank uh, is like, it's all dark in the house. Like Rachel and her son are like in bed, like kind of freaking out, but they're fine. And then they're kind of just like, he's just like sitting up, like keeping watch. And he goes into like one of the rooms and Rachel's sister is drunk like a hell of a lot of whiskey. And is just like, ah, it wasn't me. And he's like, what? <laughs> and she's like, oh my God, like it's basically, it's me. And he's like, what the fuck? So she hired an assassin to kill her sister 
because she was jealous of her. <laughs> like, what? It's so weird. It's bananas. It's like the weirdest fucking thing ever. I completely like, forgot about so that So they part. like, the beginning, he like sees her sister working out and he like goes and talks to her and there's all these pictures on the wall and he notices like, it's like, oh, it's Nikki with Rachel and Nikki's like playing the guitar and he's like, is this you? And she's like, yeah. She's like, um, I started a band uh, when we were little and it was going really great. And then Rachel like sang a song and everybody was hooked and loved it. And all she became like an immediate star. And then I quit. <laughs> like that's like the backstory there. And you're like, oh, wow, <laughs> bad blood. But it's just weird. And, and, and I don't know. They don't really do a good job of fostering like the hatred right. of that relationship. There's like right. one scene where frank needs orange juice and rachel's like nikki get him orange juice so maybe she's mad about that and then like nikki like or the sister nikki realizes that they've slept together so then like she tries to come on to him thinking like maybe he'll want to hook up with her now that Ra- he's not hooking with rachel i don't know and she like he rejects her Just- and she's like she has everything so that's like one thing but it's like bitch First of all, like, you can't sing as well, okay? That was proven <laughs> because they sing together at one point, and her voice is fine. It's, it's lovely. Fine. It's fine. It's okay. But it's not as great as fucking Whitney Houston. Let's, <laughs> let's be real. I'm sorry, but it just isn't. And you're not as pretty. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, find something else. And she was, like, a music executive, apparently. So she, like, had her own career, but maybe she just, like, never could get under, underneath the shadow. I mean, it's a very She's common too trope, bitter, right? blah, blah, blah. But you're so bitter, you're going to hire an assassin? And then what? Are you going to, like, take on her star role? What about? And so the reason she's freaking out is she's like, I never wanted to kill the baby. That's what she calls Fletcher. And it's like, hello, you're going to leave him without a mom? Like, that's okay. Mm-hmm. But you would, like, you know, obviously you shouldn't want him dead. But, like, yeah, I don't know. Up. That whole thing is, like, up. weird. Such a crazy, like, out of left field yeah. <laughs> plot so, like, point. So it ends up being kind of like the sister's the bad, the bad guy. Or is she? Because then the bad guy breaks into the house and shoots her because he thinks that that's Rachel. So her little assassination plot plot really turned turned against her because she was the one that got shot. Or is it because she was saying his name and like he she was gonna lead him? And you think he heard? Yeah, I mean he was there the whole time. He was somewhere. Um, I mean, he knows what she looks like. I don't know. No, I always thought it was just like he a mistaken had... thing. The house was dark. Their sisters. No, I, don't think so. I mean. Come on. And they were, he was, she was hanging out with Frank. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't think so. Anyway, so she did, and uh, Rachel's pretty upset, even though it's like, uh, did anyone happen to tell her that her sister They don't to kill tell her? Rachel anything. <laughs> Hello, what is this whole movie about? Like, don't Sucks. tell the main person anything. Sucks. You never want to be famous. No. Um, yeah, so they have a funeral for her, and then life goes on, and then the guy's still out there, they realize, and then the next big thing is the Oscars, because Rachel's nominated for Best Actress in Queen of the Night. And they think, like, uh, Frank thinks that it's going to go off there. He's going to do it in public in front of all those people, which is a pretty big deal and thing to, like, pull off. That's impressive. Yeah. So he's there. They're at the Oscars. Tensions are high. Um, Rachel goes out to present an award, and she, like, sees, like, thinks she sees all these people in the audience who are going to kill her, and she, like, messes up all her lines. She runs off the stage. It's a big debacle. It's like people are going to be talking about that for, you know, yeah, best Oscar moments. 1992. Remember that time Rachel yeah. missed all of her cues and thought really someone was trying to bad. kill her so she ran off the stage? But then later someone did try to kill her. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, anyways, <laughs> great Oscars. Great Oscars. Um, so now it's time for best actress. And prior to this, Frank had seen his old secret security buddy with like weird fucking eyes, super creeper. Yeah, droopy lips. Was like in the ba- <laughs> was like backstage. He's like, "What are you doing here?" Again, weird because he also saw him at this weird Miami party. Yeah. And he's like, "Oh, I'm I'm um I'm t- I'm by I'm shadowing whatever, bodyguarding is that a word? Um, the governor." And he's who like, oh. wasn't there?" And like, yeah. you, this was like a VIP party, so like he probably Frank should have looked into this right. like ahead of time. What whatever. Uh, so he thinks that's suspicious. So then later he like asks the state, the host, like, where's Secret Service? Blah, blah, blah. He's like, what? I don't know him. So Portman. he's like, shit. Where's Portman? Shit, it's him. It's him. So he like tries to tell everybody. Uh, he can't tell Rachel. She goes off on stage. He he sees the guy, the Secret Service guy with the eyes, with a camera, with like a red, the thing. What is that? The thing, the, the red oh, beam like thing. Like a targeting thing. Yep. Like a sniper. Yep. Thingy. <laughs> 
and he freaks out and Rachel's walking this, runs she to the won. stage she, she wins. wins she's like yay and like waving and then Frank just is like fuck it and like runs out there in slow motion really the best part <laughs> two shots and he just like jumps in front of her with like both arms up basically with and she's, arms wide open <laughs> and it, she's like still pissed at this point because they had like she was mad and didn't even want him to bodyguard her anymore once he like made her flip out she blames him for like flipping out before so she's just so mad at him and she's basically like frank what are you doing what are you doing and then notices like there's blood everywhere and everyone thinks like she's shot but she's like it's not me it's not me it's him meanwhile that guy still has a camera and still is trying to shoot rachel like dude get the net get the fuck out of there he's like the worst, the worst. so frank has like just enough strength to like pick up the gun and pew, pew, shoots the guy twice and no, he's so dead shots dead and he's okay he really just got shot in there i'm yeah, like he's he's, fine. Totes fine. he's totes fine. fine um but uh so then it's like a couple of days later and then he's harms his arms on the sling and they're like taking a plane back to wherever they need to go. I don't know where they're going. So they like say their goodbyes and he says goodbye to the little boy and he says goodbye to his like little secret service or other bodyguard pals. And then she's like, okay, like, let's make this quick. Like, thanks so much for saving my life. Like whatever. And they have a nice like sweet moment. She starts crying and then she gets on the plane and then, and then it starts. If I should stay I would only be in your way, so I'll go, but I know I'll think of you every step of the way. Wow. Could do it. It's tough. It's tough. <laughs> that is like the hardest song to it sing. It is. BT does. But you know, it's famous. But and super famous. And do you know that it was Kevin Costner's idea for her to start that with an acapella? Yeah. Oh my God. It's so fucking beautiful. So she's on the plane and she's like, wait. Makes a plane stop, goes down there and runs to him. She's like really awesome t- uh, scarf on her head and these sunglasses. She's like very chic and just jumps in his arms. And they start making out. It's him a- now. Love you. Ah. It's impossible. And then they they show two scenes where it's just her singing the song, like the rest of the song, um, at some like concert or something. And then very awkwardly, the next scene, Frank at like a Lions Club. It's like, <laughs> bum, 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 like bodyguarding some like losers at this Looking like depressed yeah. as fuck, buck and sad. So I mean, I think it's supposed to mean like okay, like their lives had to go on. And obviously the whole subject of the song, like, I will always love you. Like, I'm, I'll, I'll go like, what's the, I love that line. That's like, you both know, like, I'm not what you, we both know. I'm not what you, you need, you need. So they like couldn't be together. It's a song about not being able to be together. And like they dance to like con- uh, the country version of that song, which I think the original song is a Dolly Parton sort mm-hmm. of country ass song. The, this, the version they sing is done by a man. It's like kind of gross. Um, but it's, and they're like dancing at this little bar together and she makes a point of being like, wow, like the ly- lyrics to the song are like super depressing. And then it's kind of nice that they like tie it into the end. I think that is like kind of a interesting part to that. Whatever. Bullshit. I think they should have ended the movie with them kissing at the airport. Yeah. I just, I think exactly. It's just so like, weird. Why? Why it's like that? this weird freeze frame. It's not even a good shot. It's like a hat. Like if I took a camera and was like zooming in on Kevin Costner from like the audience and then oh, freeze it. It freeze frame so on the weird. face. Yeah. I mean, you can make your own assumptions on whether you think they make it. Hello. Like I asked that question at the end of every movie. <laughs> like leave it to yourself whether you're like, oh, okay. Like were they ended up like able to be a couple or not? Because... He wasn't bodyguarding her anymore, so like, why not? He's got nothing. He's got nothing to live for. Maybe they were, but they just like he came. He came over on the weekends. Like maybe mm. he like did his bodyguarding job, and then why like, would they show that weird ass no, fucking scene I at know. the lines? I'm just trying to make it right. Rotary Club. Stupid ending. Dumb. So dumb. Uh, but anyways, yeah. So I don't remember a ton of this movie from when I was little. I wrote down three things I think I remembered. <laughs> um, number one, the scene where Kevin Costner gets shot at the end. Mm-hmm. Obs. It's like everyone Super remembers famous. that. Um, the end, which the I will always love you. Yep. Maybe the boat scene? Question yeah. mark. You totally and, did. Because you kept being like, the boat. <laughs> I know. And this, the other scene where he likes, like, 
sees her sister working out in that weird oh, studio. Weird. Like, I remembered okay. that for some okay. reason. Um, I had a couple, yeah, a couple other scenes that I remember that stuck out. Um, as I said, the samurai sword scene. So I, I didn't. I have no recollection. Well, that's of that supposed scene to be like the seduction scene. I remember. Ooh, and so they like go out on that little date, trick. and he takes her to this samurai movie, ironically called The Bodyguard. And he's like explaining to her about like it's basically like a uh, look into like kind of like what would make someone be a bodyguard. Like you don't have you like you don't have a fear of death or something like that. It was like oh, this very symbolic like kind of thing. So then she goes to his like weird little basement apartment and he's like has a samurai sword on the wall and she like takes it out and is doing like flirty like samurai <laughs> sword me, moves me. and like puts it to his chest and then he like gets up and is like he's like watch this and she <laughs> kind of had this like oddly placed silk scarf on her neck the whole time which you're like that looks out of place mm. and now you know why because it's like a total prop so he like takes the, sc- the s- silk scarf from her and like throws it in the air. And then it falls down, and the sword is so sharp, it cuts the silk scarf in half, like, effortlessly. And then he pulls her to her, and they start making out, and then they do it. The old scarf the trick. The old samurai scarf trick. Get you trick. every time. Um, I think that they just, they fell in love so quickly. And it, yeah. like, always, it just kind of bothers me. That it's yeah. just, like, so simple. She's like, I hate you, I hate you. And then she sees him watching one of her like movie or like tapes in his little like pool house and she's like oh she likes me and then she flirts with him and then they fall in love it's well weird. it just seems so out of character for that guy who was right. very like strict and i guess that's the point is that like oh my god she was so great that he like couldn't resist but like i didn't get that feeling he was like that person who gets swayed like that by anybody right. and partially because we don't we know nothing about him right. like he's such a blank and she says that She's like, you, I can't figure you out. Right. Like, he says, like, one thing about the, the, the woman just, like, didn't love him anymore right. or something. And it's like, well, I think I know why. You're a total wet blanket. Yeah. I mean, I don't think he can, like, have relationships or something. And it was just, like, maybe a little test drive of, like, why he shouldn't. I don't know. It's kind of weird. he thinks everyone's trying to kill him or something? I don't know. I don't know. Suspicious. He just always wants to protect people and, like, feels like he's going to let someone down and not be there because remember he had the whole complex of he was a bodyguard for reagan and then reagan got shot um and the reason he wasn't there because his he was burying his mom that day like dude like that's a valid excuse important. like you should be there listen, for your mom's funeral listen frankie reagan was fine he's he pulled out of it it's yeah. fine it was a little upsetting it's fine don't beat yourself up about it. He's just, like so upset about it. Yeah. It's weird. I know. So weird. So then the other part I always remember is the Queen of the Night. Like, first of all, I fucking love that song. It is so good. If you need a, a song for the Stairmaster when you want to just like do it up, do that song. It's such a great like woman power song. And it's like, it's just a total great rock out song. Anyway. So like she has this like, so... She comes out of the house and she's like, and he's like, where are you going? You t- this isn't on the schedule. Like, blah, blah, blah. And she's this like witch cape on. Basically, it's like the cape in, in Hocus Pocus. She's like total, like, quote, unquote, <laughs> queen of the night. And gets in. You don't like, but you can't see any of her outfit that she has like on underneath her. So they're like rehearsing this song like prior to this moment. And like you see the outfit that she has on, but she never actually like puts it on or whatever. So she's doing this like small little like concert promo thing at this like kind of small club. And she goes there and she gets one of those like weird cut out like you're going to die messages from that stalker. And at first she's not going to go on. And then she like hears all the fans cheering and she's like, no, I'm going to I'm going to go on. I'm going to go on. And Frank's really against it. But he's like has to let her do it. So she's like on she's like performing the song. It's basically like a lip sync because there's no like they're playing her music video. And then she's like dancing on the stage. But the way that song starts, it's like. And this like great drum beat, and she like whips off that cape, and she's like this cool outfit on. It's like kind of like a space, like futuristic outfit. The skirt's all like pearls. She had this like crazy headset with like, and then she's using one of those like uh, head mics. So cool. And she's like dancing and being all cool. Oh my God. That was like the scene when I was little. I was like, yeah, I want to be a pop star. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, that's what that's I a good song. Yeah. And I remember that 
that was that on the cover of the album like her him carrying yes, her out in that outfit, so yeah. i think i always thought poster, when i was little that poster. there was like a bomb and yeah. that that was like the the climax of yeah. the movie was that and what she was wearing so it always confused me when i watched it and i was like what the oscars like what's happening yeah. um so yeah, that is a really good I do scene remember that. because it's like yeah. and it obviously shows like why he's really needed that's how they like bond too yeah. he like she he holds her in his arms and she's like ah. right i don't know um, yeah. She's looking for a white knight. Mm-hmm. She um, <clears throat> so do you want to go over this the songs? Oh, do you have the... Oh, just the Whitney Houston songs, or oh, would yeah, you want to... talk about them. Okay. I mean, I'll just pull up the soundtrack. Okay. I didn't write them down, but... Um, I was listening to the soundtrack on the way home. It put me in, like, an amazing mood. Um, okay, so first one, obviously, I Will Always Love You, as we said. Classic song. Classic, oh, my God. Classic, classic. It's a beautiful song. Who doesn't like that song? I don't know. It's amazing. It's such a good song. And she's like, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I would say Whitney Houston is like the greatest singer of all time. I would really like, I'd love to argue that with somebody. Cause it's like, not only that she obviously like had the pipes and was just like, obviously just such amazing talent and such a natural singer. But when you like see her sing or even like these songs, she puts like such her own, not like her own spin, but like even just like the breath she takes and the way she'll like do little runs and stuff are just like, I mean, you just, someone who clearly was just born to do that, mm-hmm. you know? And like, obviously, like when you had some us, trouble no. in her life, <laughs> have some personal problems. There's a great documentary about her. What channel? What was that? Mm, HBO? Showtime? 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 Yeah. This, and it was, it's kind of like, it's portrays her, uh, you know, when she was maybe not in her best, like, time Mm -hmm. drug wise and stuff but it does go into like you know kind of why she got that way i guess um but like such an amazing talent anyway so that is like a fabulous fabulous song um i have nothing amazing i have nothing 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 if i don't have you uh everyone's favorite I'm every woman. It's all in me. I can do it naturally. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I am bragging because I'm the woman. Shaka. Shaka. Shaka Khan. What did you say? Yeah, she's, talk- she's singing about Sha- Shaka Khan, but she goes, she like Shaka. Shaka. Why is she singing about Shaka Khan? Is that Shaka Khan's song? Is it? Yeah, isn't okay. it a shock song? Okay. Yeah, yeah, All that's right. why she said it. Two covers. Whoa, yes. whoa, yes. yes. Um, Run to You. Okay, so this is the one that I used to make up a music video in my head when I was in love with this kid named Liam in eighth grade. Oh, I asked you if it was Liam, and you said no. It yes. was. You said no. It was someone in high school. No, it was Liam. older. Oh. No, it was eighth grade. Well, you got the tape. You said Liam. someone else. Okay. Weird. Well, sorry. It's Liam. And I would like <laughs> like play this song. I had this like whole music video. Like we were at like the courtyard in the charter school. And he, like I like turned around and like ran to him. Similar to the end scene of this movie. <laughs> um, how, does that, how does that song go? No, I can't think of it. I run to you. No. <laughs> Wait, hold on. It's not? <laughs> Like, I don't want to hurt anymore. That one, right? right. It's a build up. It's a build up. <laughs> All right, I got it. Okay. I know that when you look at me, there's so much that you just don't see. But if you would only take the time, I know in my heart you'd find. Oh, a girl is scared sometimes who isn't always wrong. Can't you see the hurt in me? (laughs) I feel so all alone. I want to run to you. There we go. But if I come to you, tell me, will you stay? Will you run away? And the, the part that like I really related to, I remember as a kid, it's something about like someone who's always in control. But at night, I come home and turn the key. There's nobody left. No one cares for me. Oh, no. <laughs> I would just like burst okay. into tears. I'd be like, <laughs> all right, you're in That's eighth like, grade. Still my life it's, now. Uh, yeah. So let's not dwell on it. It's more sad now, obviously. Yeah. Okay. Um, Queen of the night. <sighs> let's just play it real quick. I got the stuff that you 
So good. I just want to like, I just want to like burst into a room like with that black cape oh, on, like awesome. flowing behind me. Just like, I'm the queen of the night. So good. That's so good. Um, and then the last one, uh, Jesus loves me, which they only use in the sense that like her and her sister do that like little duet. Jesus does not love Nikki. I will say no. that right now. It's like, yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. And then it's like a couple random other songs on here. Aaron Neville and Kenny G. Lisa Stanfield. Soul System. Curtis Stigers. Stigers. And then the theme from The Bodyguard. All skippers. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So I really only listened to the first six. Those were well, it's all like the Titanic songs. soundtrack. Like everybody had that fucking soundtrack and only listened to my heart will go on. on. I liked the, the the like little pipe. Doo, 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 doo. Yeah, there was like another version of it. Good times. I um, listened to my heart will go on. Oh, I was like driving up to Vermont. Like I was going to this wedding my boyfriend was in or something last summer. And I put in, um, all right. Did I have like serious or not? Maybe I plugged in my phone and I had a Celine Dion like ultimate hits. I sang the shit out wow. of that. Wow. And my heart go on. And that is like a pretty beautiful song. Mm. It sure. got overplayed so badly. Yes. I would say it's like up there with I Will Always Love You. Yeah, totally. Always Love You is a little bit better Amazing. for me, but it's like a beautiful song. Yeah. And Celine Dion, very up there with Whitney Houston sure. in terms of like unbelievable mm-hmm. singer, right? Totally. Amazing. But yeah, like what a fucking great soundtrack, dude. Um, do you know this was the highest grossing film in 92? Second highest grossing film in 92 behind what film? <laughs> I almost gave a hint. But I would say well, I wanted a hint. I can't get a hint. What the? By, behind what animated film? Oh. 1992. Uh, Aladdin? Ding, 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 yes. ding, ding. Aladdin. Biggest film from 1992. That's amazing. Oh. What a good year. We saw that in the theaters, I'll tell you that. Hells, yes, we did. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Uh, we weren't old enough to see The Bodyguard, but we certainly saw Aladdin. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, what else do I got in here? Um, do, do, what is with Frank Farmer's OJ obsession? Oh, my God. Let's talk about it. This is like he... So every event he goes... So it's like if you're not trying to drink on the job... You get like a, a sparkling water. You get like a soda. You get like a seltzer. You get something, you know? Sparkling no. water wasn't big then. Whatever. <laughs> uh, cooler Canadian, whatever. It was there. And then Frank's like, uh, orange juice, please. He fucking loves his orange juice. He's like chugging that shit out of like a giant juice glass. Dad would not let us drink orange juice out of that big of a juice glass. Um, first of all, okay. I don't know if it's like my palate as I get older, but like I just cannot take orange juice anymore. I can do like literally a sip and I'm like, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. You know what I like? A good apple Me juice. Me too. A good oh, cranberry juice. God. I went to the store today and I was like, oh, I want some cranberry juice yeah, and I got sometimes some. Sometimes you just crave it. But you know, not Does it make you juice. flummy though? I don't like a lot of cranberry juice. It does it make, make you funny? Oh, flummy. flummy. I don't know. I didn't drink that much, but I just need something else in the morning like when I'm. Oh yeah. I love juice. When I've had juice like in here sometimes, I'm like, this is so great. I, get, yeah. so I should I buy you. Get get orange juice, but I he just think it's it too time. acidic, and he drinks it at night, and it's like it's just like in My Girl Two, where you're like, dude, I'm not trying to drink orange juice at night. It's not yeah. a good idea. Well, but also, like, do we have to go into our water discussion again? Like that water was not a thing then. Like that's how you're getting hydration. It's bizarre. It's bizarre. People still don't drink club water. Club soda? Like, what wrong with you? I don't know. Yeah, she drank a lot of club soda. Well, he could. I don't know. Just it wasn't, like, his, it wasn't it his jam. Ugh. Yeah, it was super like, weird. Also, um, there's also a weird scene in the beginning where somebody, I think it's the fat uh, other security guy yeah. from Dumb and Dumber, yeah. has like a lollipop in his mouth. Ew. And then like someone like takes it out and like holds it for him while he's doing something. Ew. And I just want to make a public service PSA that lo- <laughs> lollipops are really unprofessional. <laughs> and you should never have one in your mouth like ever in public. Just try to avoid it. So, Sweetie and I went to the fish market last weekend, or, yeah, and the guy who helped us, we were like, hi, can we get a dozen oysters? He had a fucking lollipop in his mouth the whole time. That felt very rude, and I didn't even realize why, and now I know. (laughs) I thought he, like, hated us. I'm like, what's this guy's problem? I just want some oysters. We were interrupting his lollipop break. 
he, I don't know, but it was gross. And I was like, you know, it's getting all spitty up in there. And I don't know, like getting the oyster. Like, it's just gross. It's gross. Sometimes someone will have like lollipops at work. And I'm like, I'm not trying to eat a lollipop at work. Like, yeah. nobody eats lollipops. I don't do it in public, work. really. I can eat a lollipop and I can eat a popsicle at work. <laughs> don't eat anything that you have to like suck on in your mouth in public. I'm just asking. It's totally unprofessional. Ugh, anyway, that's my PSA. You know what else is unprofessional? Sleeping with your client. Oh, uh, okay. Well, I mean, this happens a lot. A lot of celebrities have dated their bodyguards or are is Britney Spears husband or was her bodyguard no no but she did date her bodyguard yeah. at one point and you, you, Princess Diana you form a really close wasn't that something with a bodyguard yeah, yeah you it, form it, a really close relationship happen. so it's blah 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 whatever yeah. That's why I'll you gotta get. Slide. But that's why you gotta get ugly ones. Like when she, when he was like, so when he gets injured and he's not on her detail anymore, um, he like picks an old dude who was probably like ex Secret Service too. And she's like, "Why'd you get me a guy with white hair?" But it's like maybe that's best for you. Because it's like don't like don't mix business and pleasure. I mean, that person is supposed to save your life. And as Frank said, it's super confusing when like. You, I mean, obviously you care for this person because it's your job, but if you also care for this person and don't want them to die because you love them, that's like, I don't know. I feel like that just like messes things up. So yeah, it's, it's, questionable. it's not a good idea. Um, but I do love that line at the end where, and like when she, when he gets shot and they're like, all the security is really confused. Like, who is this guy? He has a gun. Like he's covered in blood. What's going on? And she's like, he's my bodyguard. Yeah, oh, she says one. it. That's good. It's good. Um, so let's go back to the names here. Mm-hmm. So for some reason, they picked this bullshit name. I don't know if it was like a bunch of white people like sitting around a, a table and we're like, here's yes. what this pop star's name is. Rachel uh, Marin, <laughs> which is like the least pop star pop star name I've ever heard in my entire life, right. let alone a woman like Whitney Houston <laughs> who would play this role as someone who's like such a spitfire and is just like so full of life. Like her name would never be Rachel. She would right. not be a Rachel. If she was a Rachel, she would change it to something yes. awesome. No, it's it's like that was her original name and and that is exactly a name that you would change to something else because it's boring as fuck and stupid. And it doesn't fit you at it's all. It's like a real boring name. Yeah. It's but so I don't weird. know, like, and this was 92 and they're like, okay, like, what's a great name? What's a great name? Mm, Rachel. Like, Rachel is, I mean, <laughs> no your- offense to anyone named Rachel, but like. <laughs> yeah. Good one. There's what, a thousand uh, billion people named what Rachel. Sh- what should her uh, sweet little son's name be? Oh, um, Fletcher. 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 Let's go with like, basically, what is that now? A super white, like, yuppie, like, went to private school name for this like sweet little black kid who likes boats. Like no, yeah, he likes boats. He doesn't sh- wear boat the, shoes. The cool black chauffeurs. Chauffeurs. I can't say chauffeur. Chauffeur. <laughs> Tupac chauffeur. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. Why can't I say Tupac it? Tupac chauffeur. You say it. Chauffeur. Uh, yeah. Chauffeur. Yeah. His name will be Henry, and then you got you know it's just like I mean Frank Fred Farmer. What's his name? Frank Frank Farmer. Farmer. Which is like a kind of a superhero. They always do that like alliteration, like, yeah, F, that's like true. So. but um, weird. Again, not a lot of thought. I think yeah. just like the script. Well, oh, kind well. of just like. Eh. Well, this might be a good time to uh, quiz you on who the other pop stars that were in the running for this role was. Sweet quiz so they, time. they always wanted to like. It sounds like they always wanted to make someone who was actually a pop star, and then make them just like act in this. So they they wanted someone with that like actual real life experience to bring to the table. Uh-huh. It sounds like. Uh-huh. So it's time for sweetie guest time. Yeah. Oh boy. Do you know it? All right. Well, All right. I'll go with the obvious ones. Okay. So obviously Madonna. Yep. Accomplished singer and actress. Yeah. Who who had her own very lucrative, wonderful moving uh, movie acting career. Yes. Go Madonna. Um. And, and then, then think of the time period. The time, yes, the time period. Time period. Um. Maybe Janet Jackson. Yes. Okay. How about Mariah Carey? Nope. Hmm. Too young. Uh, Paula Abdul? Nope. <laughs> Not a good enough singer. Think um, more 80s. 80s. Um, Tiffany? Nope. <laughs> Tiffany Gibson? Nope. <laughs> Think of some of the women that were on that like 1983 Grammys video that dad had like years ago. Pat Benatar? Yes. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Cindy Lauper. No. <laughs> um, I'm out. I'm out. I tapped out. Okay. I Olivia Newton John. Uh, 
Joan Jett. Ah, yes. Debbie Harry. Mm, mm. Someone named Terry Nunn. <laughs> Who's that? Sounds familiar. You know. Kim Carnes, who I'm forgetting what that song is that she's really famous for. And ironically, Dolly Parton. <laughs> Dolly. Interesting. Yeah. Just, I mean, it, would it have been the same character or did they like, once they cast Whitney I guess, Houston, like, the they, original, like, so they tried to do this in like the 70s with Diana Ross and some actor hmm. and they like never um, got through with it. So that's a shame. Oh, Kim Carnes, Kim Carnes is Betty Davis eyes. Good song. That's very good song. Mm. That a good song. Um, yeah, so that would have been crazy. But I think Whitney was perfect for this. Yeah, and then I thought Whitney, did, this was her first film, and I thought she actually did more films after this, but she really only did Wing Tex Hale and The Preacher's Wife. Preacher's Wife, I remember those. Yeah, that's a sweet. I never saw them, but I remember them. We saw Preacher's Wife in the movie theater. I didn't. Oh, you must have gone with your friends on a birthday party again or something. No, I probably with Dad. No, I ain't going. going. I don't want to see that. And Wing Tex Hale's good, too. It's a good little ensemble cost. Um, yeah, so that's awesome. Um, couple, Sweetie Lemon here, just two, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Del Paxton. Del. Also in another, like, musical role. I mean, he doesn't play any music, but he's, like, her manager. We think. Yeah, which is pretty cool. And then, randomly, Uncle Frank from Home Alone is, like, an FBI buddy. <laughs> it's weird. Very cool. Yep. Um, but yeah, and this was the heyday of Kevin Costner. Yes. Who was a big deal um, to a lot of women. I never saw the appeal. Me neither. Um, I never did. I also just don't think he's a great actor. Like, he's always just bored me. Like, Dances with Wolves, Snooze Fest. Well, I asked, I asked Carol, um, you know, not on the, we're not going to call her, but I did talk to her via text before this uh, and asked her, like, what up, what, what up with the deal with, with uh, Kevin Costner? Because I remember when we were little. My friend Sarah Wood was like, oh, my God, my mom loves Kevin Costner. She's like the biggest crush. He is a- she has the biggest crush on him. And I was like, what? Ew. I, mean, I was also 12, so I could really get that. But as I've gotten older, like, he just seems like a big dummy. Mm, like a dud. Like, yeah. I don't know. It's like, eh. So I don't know, like, and maybe it was his, like, because I've never, I haven't seen, like, much of his older. I haven't seen, I've never seen Field of Dreams. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like oh. I, I I've seen a couple in here. Like I've seen this one, obviously. I've never seen Waterworld. Dud. <laughs> um, I've never seen. Is he in the Postman? No. Is he in that one with the pitcher and Susan Sarandon? No. Bull Durham. Uh, um, is he in Bull Durham? Maybe. Um, Tin Cop. I've seen that. Mm. Um, what's the other one I was gonna say? Oh, uh, what's the JFK? Uh, right. I always remember him that. Good one. Um, I'm like blanking on every... Oh, wait. It's not important. No. <laughs> wait. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know. But yeah, it just doesn't do it for me. I mean, he's okay in this, and I think he does like what he needs to do. But it's just... So when Whitney Houston died, I don't know if you saw this, but like he was pretty good friends with her after filming this and like actually like really lobbied for her to get this part and just like really thought she was like amazing. I guess like she like gave him singing lessons and he gave her like acting lessons and mm-hmm. would give her all these pointers and all this stuff. It seems like they had, like a really cute relationship. Mm-hmm. And then at her memorial service, he spoke Aww. and was like crying. Mm-hmm. And so clearly they had this like sweet little relationship. So their chemistry was real in like a sense, maybe not in a sexual sense, maybe just like, Who friendly. Um, but I thought that was like kind of adorable. That's and really he seems sweet. like a good guy. Sure. I mean, I don't know, but I do want to see Dances with know. Wolves. I've heard that oh, is good. Oh, you've not seen that? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Have yeah. you seen that? Yeah. Oh, okay. I watched it in high school all the time. Wow. Um, it's like eight hours long? No. It's regular regular so. size? Mm, I mean, maybe like a little longer than regular size, okay. but maybe two hours. Mom was like, hours? bring out the Kleenex. For Dances with Wolves? Yeah. The ending. She told, she told me about the ending. I forget. Yeah. Anyways. Um, yeah. Anything else? Um, there's some great... If you're a kid of the 90s, references to Entertainment Tonight, mm. that like theme song. <laughs> and John Tesh like doing all these like this voiceover of like that him on that show, which like totally brings me back. That was like something we watched all the time. Mm. Like it was on at like seven o'clock or something like that. Right. When Access Hollywood's on now, it used to be Entertainment Tonight. Yeah. And it was like Don Tesh. And Tonight's still on, though. It but is? It's on like after Access Hollywood. Oh, I wow. think. But it's okay. just like the same fucking show. Right, it just played. So it's like, why do they do that? Pointless. I don't know. Yeah, but I remember like John Tesh and then the dark haired guy who took over after him, and then like Mary Hart. Mm, yeah, cozy Mary Hart. Cozy. She seems that was just it was just fun. Yeah, it was just like cozy ninety shit. 
Um, yeah, so so this was fun. I mean, again, not not the greatest movie in the world. <laughs> no, but brought me back. Yeah, um, but I think we had a good time. Fletcher is the man. Fletcher speaks Fletcher. the truth. Fletcher's like the best character. Well, they call they call start calling him Fletch by the end, which I was like, that kind of fits. Maybe. Um, <laughs> still I'm not still, into it. I'm not convinced. Um, but I thought he's, he was amazing and adorable. I loved him. Loved Henry. I wish he had more to do. I wish they could have had a big car limo chase scene with him. That Maybe was pretty that, funny though when he's teaching him how to drive. Right. And I feel like it was like, like it was like um, Chekhov's gun, and it's like you put it in there so it's gonna come up later, but it never did. Mm-hmm. Disappointing. Um, yeah. So that's it, I guess. I don't know. Wrap yeah. up. That's all I got. I sang Wrap all my songs. Up. I waxed poetically about um, Whitney Houston, my gal. R.I.P. Yeah. Sad yeah. day. Sad day. That sad was awful. Day. So sad. Um, but yeah, guys. So that wraps up. We did it. We didn't think we were gonna get them all in this November, but we did. Our random movie selections done and done. Yeah, yeah. So thanks for hanging in there. I know these were like super rando. And, uh, but I hope you enjoyed them. You know, shaking it up. Shake it up. Shake it up. Ah. Um, But we're going to December. So we're going to do a couple Christmas movies. Not all Christmas movies because it's not really our jam. Uh, We're going to put out a call on Twitter and Instagram soon to get your help with selecting our Christmas films. So stay tuned for that news. And any other updates? I think that's it. Wow. Just thank you as always for listening. And you can find us on Twitter at the Sweetie Club or on Instagram at Large Marge Santos. Thank you for listening. Bye. Bye.